question for, yeah, I think I want you to do this question as a practice of Lenz's law. Although the downside is that um, this is one of those questions that I can't randomize because of this image. <laughs> so, um, so I'll be basically giving you the answer, but that's fine. There's no other way to do it. And I do want to say with the uh, Lenz's law, with the right hand rule, there's no replacement for practice because the skill for the, it relies on you to visualize a three-dimensional thing that's going on. So I can describe, I can demonstrate, but in the end, uh, you have to practice. So, uh, so even though I'm telling you the answer here, I would uh, strongly encourage you to practice on your own until, um, you know, without remembering exactly what I said until you are able to get this right on your own as you apply. Uh, well, in this case, well, uh, you know, I think you are using right hand rule after applying Lenz's law. So, so let me get started. I'll just start from A, work all the way through F. And just uh, as a matter of reading the question, let me just uh, make sure I get this right. The figures are drawn in perspective view for the loops that appear as ellipses. Assume they are circular loops lying perpendicular to the page. So that's affecting B and F. So I'll watch out for that. Okay, so part A. So as this bar moves to the left, what's happening is the, so the uh, strength of magnetic field isn't changing, but the area of this loop is changing. And as long as you're thinking about the loop that's completed by this um, conductor thing, it'll be, it'll result in decreasing flux, not from change of magnetic field, but from change of the area. So what I'm looking at in all these cases is what is the direction of the change of magnetic flux? This is the key thing I'm looking at for A with the magnetic field pointing out and the area decreasing, the direction of change of magnetic flux is into the page, into the screen. So the current that's uh, induced in the loop is going to generate um, magnetic generate magnetic field that opposes this change. So the magnetic field due to the induced current needs to point out of the screen, which means the current will flow in this direction. This is me applying the third version of uh, right hand rule where my thumb points in the direction of magnetic field, then the way my fingers curl give me the direction of current. So the current should be flowing in counterclockwise direction. So this should be the direction of current. Let me go through them all and then I'll en enter all the answers all at the same time. B is easy because um, with that orientation of loop, the magnetic flux is zero or more precisely, when I try to do the calculation, phi is equal to B dot A. The, so this is the direction of B. The direction of surface normal and hat is in that direction. They are 90 degrees, so it's zero. So there, the um, magnetic flux is zero. It remains at zero. So change of magnetic flux is zero. No voltage, no current induced. So current is zero. And I guess depending on the size of this uh, area, even if it wasn't perpendicular, yeah, 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 so yeah, zero. I see in C where it's different, so <laughs> let me do C. So in C, you can, it's uh, intentionally drawn this way where the region with the magnetic field ends here. And so the loop is entering from region of no magnetic field into the region of magnetic field. And uh, for the purpose of the question, we are not gonna worry about how that's all set up. Uh, you could imagine there's an invisible solenoid here with enough gap for the, uh, in, with enough gap for the loop to slip through. However, when the question gives you the magnetic field arrangement, it's giving you a gift of not having to worry about how exactly that field is produced, so. Let me not worry about that. But what I do see is um, the loop is, uh, this loop is entering a region of magnetic field pointing out of the screen. So 
the effective area that has the magnetic field in. So when I imagine doing the magnetic flux calculation, the area is increasing. It's kind of opposite of what we had in A. So the change of magnetic flux is also pointing out of the screen. So the direction of, or the, the magnetic field that's gonna be produced by the induced current, that has to point in the opposite direction. So the current will flow in such a direction so that the magnetic field due to the induced current points into the screen that opposes the change in flux. And this is the direction of the current or a clockwise direction of current. Yeah, so it's opposite of A, what we would expect. The, uh, you know what, this is the exact opposite of A. So I think without going through complicated uh, calcul uh, discussion, I think I can guess that it'll flow clockwise. And I'm pretty sure it's right. So, so let me leave that there. And by the way, A and D, you can also get it through motion induced voltage. Um, as in, uh, imagine this uh, bar contains positive charges, then you can imagine doing the calculation for magnetic force. Magnetic force is QV cross B. So you use the first version of right hand rule to make your fingers point in the direction of V and orient it so that you can curl it in the direction of B, so this way, so V cross B. Then the direction of your thumb gives you the direction that positive charges will be pushed in, it's downward, which is consistent with the, this direction of current that I figured out from earlier. So, okay, so we are almost to the, E and F are interesting because so far we've dealt with where magnetic field was actually static. It was the loop that was moving. And uh, so I go through this in the lecture. Um, it's in considering situations like E where you have to presume existence of Faraday's law. Because A through D, you could have gotten it from motion induced voltage. It's in E where you need actually need the Faraday's law for consistency of physics call setup. Watch the lecture. <laughs> so with the increasing magnetic field, uh, magnetic field pointing out of the screen and increasing, that means change of flux is out of the screen. So the direction of magnetic field due to induced current has to be opposing that. So the direction of the induced current will be into the screen. So the, this direction is the direction of current or a clockwise direction. So here, the direction of current should be clockwise. And C and E are um, end result wise very similar. Both of them involve increasing magnetic flux. So clockwise current gets induced so that the induced magnetic field opposes that change. F, it's uh, in some ways very similar to B um, because the magnetic flux to start Oops, sorry, that's not a vector quantity. I don't know why I drew that. Magnetic flux to start was already zero. When you calculate B dot DA here, it's zero because perpendicular. So even with a changing magnetic field, it doesn't change away from zero. So no current will be flowing here. Okay, so oh, oh, what's the best way to do this here? I'm gonna, let me try to mark it from here. Um, so this will be counterclockwise. B will be in neither direction. That's a zero. Um, and I'm just gonna have to remember the rest. Clockwise, 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 it's zero. Clockwise, 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 it's zero. Okay. Clockwise, 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 zero. Yeah, and as seen from top side of the room, it doesn't matter because it's too anyway. So yeah, so that's it. And um, again, uh, right hand rule and Lenz's law, it takes a lot of practice because it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it, it has to do the visualization. Um, it's questions like this where there is a formula for it to memorize and plug numbers into. Those are the ones that I see uh, students are struggling. So 
get plan your practice so that when you see questions like this, um, you know exactly what to do. Uh, your hand should be moving somehow because both in application of, well, yeah, even in application lenses law, I do that with my thumb and in application of the right hand rule, you should be using your right hand at some point. 